If you think you might have high estrogen because you have tender breasts, cramps, headaches, or more anxiety leading up to your period, stick around because I'm gonna share four ways you can reduce excess estrogen in your body. But before I dive in, make sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and click that bell to be notified every time I post a new video on menstrual cycle health, nutrition, and fitness. And if you don't know me yet, my name is Omega Zumpano. I also had high estrogen and it expressed itself as high anxiety in my luteal phase. I could hardly work. And I stand before you a human that no longer has premenstrual anxiety that has reduced estrogen in her body. So let's dive in to how you can do that too. Number one, reduce your exposure to environmental estrogens. Environmental estrogens can be found in skincare products and food. So let me give you a short list of what to look for in the ingredient labels so that you can be informed. Phthalates found commonly in toys and prescriptions. Bisphenols are found in hard plastic toys and non-organic foods sometimes. Parabens can be found in cosmetics and skincare. Benzophenes also found in cosmetics and skincare. And ethyl exyl 4 methoxycinnamate found in sunscreens. The next environmental estrogen that we have to be aware of is DDT. Now, DDT is found in pesticides, and DDT has been illegalized to use in the US, so it's a good idea to not buy foods, fruits, and vegetables that have been grown outside of the US because those might have DDT on them, which is an endocrine disruptor. This 2002 study by Frigo et al. showed us that DDT causes upregulation of estrogen production in cells. This is the reason to stay away from conventional fruits and veggies grown outside of the US. And since we're on the topic of pesticides, it's important to note that there are many different types of pesticides that are used in our food supply. This 2006 study by Brett Veld et al. link pesticide use to female health problems, such as long cycles, missed periods, or mid-cycle bleeding. And although it's really hard to say when just looking at these studies, however, most of these menstrual cycle irregularities can be associated to higher estrogen than what is considered normal for one's body. So when we're talking about buying conventional versus organic, not everyone is as privileged to buy organic all the time. So I've linked a dirty dozen list down below so you can do your best at sticking to conventional foods that are actually a little safer when it comes to pesticide use and impacting your hormones. The second tip I have for you is to support progesterone. Now progesterone is estrogen's counterpart. So ways that we can support progesterone include balancing your blood sugar. That would be by eating fiber, fat, and protein every two to four hours reducing inflammation by removing foods that you are sensitive to. That might be wheat, gluten, or dairy for most of us. Limiting or giving up alcohol, reducing stress. Uh, we can do this by meditating, practicing yoga, setting up boundaries, or asking for help even. If you're getting something out of this video so far, go ahead, click that like button, let me know, and we'll continue on to the next tip that I have for you which is to support the liver to colon relationship. So the liver is responsible for getting rid of all the toxins. When estrogen is in excess in our body, our body looks at that like a toxin. So it sends it from the liver to the colon where it can be excreted. So ways to support that process is to eat lots of fiber after ovulation. For most of us, that's 14 days after our period starts. The RDA for fiber is 10 to 15 grams. So eating on the upper limit of that can really help your body with its natural estrogen detoxification process. Foods like broccoli, kale, and cauliflower, all of those brassicas actually have nutrients in them that support the liver to colon relationship. So increasing your intake of those foods can definitely support you too. Another fiber tip is to start seed cycling. Now I have a post about seed cycling on my Instagram page and I'll link that down below, but I'll tell you here too that seed cycling is a great way to help harmonize your hormones. 
in the first part of your cycle when you start to bleed and into your follicular phase you start eating flax and pumpkin seeds and those help support the healthy rise of hormones and from ovulation on into your luteal phase you eat sesame and sunflower seeds and the best way to do this is to get these seeds raw grind them up and then consume a tablespoon of each seed per day. Again, you don't have to memorize all of that. I have all of that in an Instagram post that I have linked for you below. The last tip I have for you is to reduce caffeine intake. So don't turn me off yet. I know a lot of you like your caffeine, but there's good reason to avoid it. This 2012 research study by Schleep et al. showed that estrogen is higher in all races when subjects consumed caffeine in the form of green tea and soda. And this 2015 study by Sisti et al. showed that there is a correlation between caffeine from coffee and estrogen metabolites in urine, showing us that when we consume caffeine, we actually have more estrogen buildup in our body not good. Getting off caffeine is hard for some and easier for others. And I was addicted to caffeine since I was in the bottle. Long story, I'll tell you later. If you are a personal trainer that wants to go from a place of not fully understanding the menstrual cycle to being a confident menstrual cycle coach so that you can provide hormonal health resource to people in your community, I would love to show you how to do that. You can book a call with me using the link in the description box below. And make sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and if you're curious how I got off caffeine, you can watch this video next. I'll see you there, bye.